I don't care how cold it is outside, I'm still gonna have iced coffee every morning. Oops. The key ingredient. I am from Canada after all. I mean, this is already cold, but something about adding ice cubes into the drink just makes it better. It's science, don't at me. I'm sorry, that is just absolutely delicious. Wow. Oh, that was just like straight maple syrup. I didn't mix that very good. <laughs> mm. Now some coffee was necessary, but before we hop into the actual food, I do wanna start off by thanking Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. As a freelancer, I think it's really important to have your own website, your own landing page beyond just your social media platform. So Squarespace is great for that. It really is an all-in-one platform to help you build your online presence and to basically help you run your business. You can head to squarespace.com slash Jacqueline Forbes to get 10% off your first Squarespace order, but more on that later. Mm. Wanna know what it is? It's that noise. The noise of the ice and the coffee and the glass, it's just, that's what gets me alive in the morning, you know? I actually don't really know what I feel like for breakfast. I could do an oatmeal, could do a toast. I could do sweet or savory though. I'm not really like in a mood for one or the other. Let's go see what I have in the fridge. Okay, so I ended up deciding I'm gonna do a little bowl of oatmeal here. I actually have a bunch of fresh strawberries that I wanna use up because I feel like they're gonna kinda go bad soon. So oatmeal it is with a ton of strawberries. Let's do it. So I'm normally pretty lazy with my oatmeal. I just put a bit of water in and pop it in the microwave. Nothing too cray cray. So something that I've actually been doing lately is popping a little bit of protein powder into my oats just to, you know, increase the protein. Oh, I didn't realize that this was a new one. Where's the little scooper? So I don't wanna put too much in and like overpower the flavor, but I am gonna add a little sprinkle of that. I'm also gonna add in some chia seeds. So I'm gonna pop on some strawberries and banana. Now I'm just gonna add probably like one third of the banana. I don't even need to explain my passion for natural peanut butter. I'm gonna put a little bit of cinnamon on top and I'm also gonna put a good old sprinkle of hemp hearts on. Now if you wanted to, you could do a drizzle of maple syrup or agave, but I think this is probably gonna be sweet enough. I actually think I am gonna add a bit of soy milk though inside because it does look a little bit dry. So there we go, that is my breakfast. I feel like that is pretty much my oatmeal go-to. Obviously I'll change up like whatever fruit I have in the house, but a nut butter, oatmeal, like that is just the way to go. I always say if you don't like oatmeal, then you're just making it wrong. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh, guys, I forgot to tell you about this. Okay, so if you've been watching my videos for a long time, You've probably seen me with my giant camel back. I used to have a purple one and it was literally like seven years old to the point that I was like, okay, maybe this is harboring germs. Like I use this too often and I take it everywhere. I could kind of use a replacement. Long story short, Camelback was kind enough to send me a new one, which I'm just deceased about. And everyone in my personal life is like, oh my God, Jacqueline, you have a new Camelback. Like what's happening? Cause everyone knows me by my Camelback. Now Camelback is not paying me to say this. I just genuinely am this passionate about a water bottle because I swear it changes the hydration game. Something about the straw and like the actual like nozzle on the end of this, it is like none other. And I pretty much tried every single reusable water bottle with like a straw, but nothing compares to the Camelback. Something about it just makes you drink so much more water and I just, I cannot live without my Camelback. Now this one here is the bigger size. It's the liter, which is important because I drink a lot of water. I probably go through like three or four of these in a day. And um, yeah, I just am obsessed with my Camelback. I bring it everywhere and I'm just so happy that I have a fresh new one here. It's just, it's so clean and so new and just all of the great things. If you have a Camelback, you'll just know there is something game changing about this specific water bottle. It's actually so funny too. I'm pretty sure like, well, it must've been seven or eight years ago. I was watching a YouTube video and this YouTuber was talking about her Camelback. So obviously I was influenced and went out and purchased it. So it's so funny now that I'm back in a YouTube video telling you guys to go get a Camelback because you know, it's just coming full circle, but Camelbacks, baby, you can't go wrong with it. Now I have a pretty busy day ahead of me. I have to go take a meeting in the afternoon. Gotta film another video, come back here, edit something, send that off. 
Um, so just like a little bit of running around today. I mean, I guess it depends on the situation. I'm not like the biggest snacker. I'd rather just have like a couple of really big hearty meals versus like little grab and go things along the way. So yeah, whenever I have more of a busy day, I definitely make the time to wake up and like make a proper big breakfast. And I think for the most part, I should be eating all my meals at home. I'll be coming back in between, but we'll see. Sometimes life throws a curveball at ya. Whew, okay, I just got back from my meeting. I'm nice and hungry. It actually ran a bit later than it was supposed to, so I am ready for some lunch. It's like 2.38 right now. That's definitely later than when I would normally eat lunch, but um, yeah, I've got some leftovers in the fridge, which I'm gonna throw in there. Also wanted to mention, I got this new work bag. It's from Matt Nat, which is all vegan um, and sustainable goods, and I am so obsessed with it. This has been like my new, my new go-to. It fits my laptop inside. I'm actually thinking I might do like a, a what's in my work bag or like what's in my carry-on bag kind of video. So let me know if you guys would wanna see that. Also, I'm pretty sure that I have a curse whenever I film these videos at home because it always rains the day that I film a what I eat in a day, which makes no sense. Like I live in Toronto. It's not particularly like a rainy city like Vancouver or anything like that. But whenever I go to film, I'm always like, oh, it's so gloomy and rainy today. I don't know how that happens, but I swear, go back and watch some other what I eat in a day, and I'll be like, oh, it's raining today. And guess what? It's raining today. Okay, so I am gonna do a little like makeshift kind of salad. I have some leftover pasta salad in here, which I think I'm gonna add some arugula to. Let's see if this will be enough. I'm actually, mm, could go for like an avocado toast. We'll see how hungry I am. This is literally just like a cold pasta salad with like a vinaigrette, apple cider dressing, and then some veggies in there. And I'm just gonna throw that on top and hope for the best. Now this doesn't look like the most appetizing, but it also doesn't look the worst. I'm just gonna grab a handful of some fresh cherry tomatoes, pop those on. I'm also gonna throw a few olives inside. Now there's this one pasta salad that I used to love growing up and it had um, like olives, feta cheese. Now I would love if I had like a homemade vegan feta cheese to add into that, that would be amazing. Now I'm just gonna do a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And I think we're gonna call this a meal. Actually, you know what, this looks pretty good. Mm. Actually not bad at all. Considering that these leftovers are from like three days ago, definitely edible. I'm telling you, there's something about a cold pasta salad that is just so delicious to me. Okay, I just demolished that plate. There's a lot of dressing left over, <laughs> um, but I'm still a little hungry. So I think, you know what? My gut was telling me I wanted an avocado toast. So I'm gonna make it a little avocado toast. Um, double lunch, don't be mad about it. What up? So I'm just gonna do one slice of brown bread. Oh, I took this out of the freezer. That was really hard to detach. So I'm just gonna do a half of an avocado and I'm cutting this with a butter knife, which is the worst decision I've made in a hot minute. This half is gonna go back in the fridge. So lately I've had a very simple avocado toast recipe. I'll just do about half of an avocado. I am obsessed with kimchi, so I will load up the toast with as much kimchi that I can handle and then do a little sprinkling of everything but the bagel sesame seasoning because this stuff is just, it's life. Now comes the real star of the show. I really just decided that I loved anything like fermented or pickled. I just, mm, I cannot get enough of it. Now we're gonna top with a healthy amount of the seasoning. Okay, there we go. That is lunch part two. She's so pretty. Mmm. If you have not done kimchi on an avocado toast, you are missing out. The combo is just too good. That truly hit the spot. Now I am nice and full. That actually was like so particularly good, like almost life changing. Yummy yum. Okay, I gotta get working. I'm gonna be sitting at my computer doing nothing too exciting, so I will see you guys the next time I eat. Okay, so I'm just working away on my computer, but I'm gonna grab a little handful of nuts. You know when you're like, I'm not really hungry, I just wanna snack on something when I work? That's kind of the mood I'm in. So this one just has a different mix of roasted and salted almonds, cashews, macadamia nuts, there's Brazil nuts, and am I forgetting something? Oh, pecans in there. Anyways, I'm gonna pour this out into a little bowl just so that way I have some sort of portion control. Something about like salted and mixed nuts, I will just eat way too much of them. So I always put it in a bowl so that way I have like an end limit instead of this giant bucket. It always blows my mind when I read like the portion sizes of it because it's like, oh, two nuts, 500 calories. 
Not that I really like worry about that stuff, but you can overeat them so quickly. Definitely something to at least be mindful of <laughs> as I demolish them. So I just finished up editing a video and then I actually had a phone meeting. It was just like one of those afternoon, late afternoons, I guess, that was like super, super productive. So I'm feeling good. I'm actually gonna go right out now. There's an event I'm gonna pop by to. And then apparently after the event, I'm supposed to go for like, like a 10K run with someone, which we'll see how that goes because it looks very cold outside. I'm actually really cold right now. I need to put on a sweater. It'll be like an 8.30 late night run, which in the winter is just cold and dark and I'm gonna need to put on my layers and reflective gear for sure. Also, I would normally be eating dinner probably around now, but I'm gonna have dinner probably not till like 10 o'clock now. Who knows if this run is gonna happen? But yeah, anyways, I normally am someone that eats dinner really, really early, um, but I think tonight I'll be eating super late. So we'll see, I'll keep you guys posted. <laughs> I don't feel good after the run, just the idea of going outside and going on a run just seems like not the move. But fortunately or unfortunately, when you do have a running buddy, you're kind of held accountable. So, woo, I'm gonna do it, <laughs> hopefully. <sighs> well, I did it. Do I feel good? Maybe? That was definitely not my best run. The weather was actually super nice out tonight. Um, it was like very mild, but I was just so dehydrated. I just wasn't feeling like 200%. Um, we ended up doing 7K, which was better than I thought. So yeah, that's the situation. I also ran with my makeup on, which that's like a personal pet peeve of mine. I hate working out with makeup, but I was running back from, I was out at an event and then I had to run home, quickly get changed and then go meet up with my friends. So I didn't really have time to like wash my face. Um, anyways, I just turned on the oven. I'm getting it preheated. Okay, so to start off, I have my oven preheating to 450 degrees. I have a silicone baking sheet. These are actually really good because they're reusable. So if you normally use parchment paper, this is a really good replacement. I'll link it down below. I get mine on Amazon. So I just have a bunch of Brussels sprouts here. I've been having a recent obsession with them. I cannot stop eating them. And I'm not kidding when I say I could eat all of these in one sitting. So all I do with my Brussels sprouts is literally just cut them in half. Now I kind of like meals like this because it's pretty quick to do. It doesn't take a lot of dishes. I'm gonna throw this and the tofu I'm gonna make on the same tray. I find too, whenever I'm just kind of making like simple whole food focused meals, it really doesn't take that long to actually cook. Sometimes the simpler, the better. And especially for like the everyday person, like it's not super realistic to be trying all these like crazy recipes that take a million different ingredients and take so long to do. So sometimes just going back to the basics is the move. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is take some extra firm tofu. Now one trick about tofu is that you actually wanna put it in the freezer and then let it dethaw before you cook it. It just kind of makes the texture of the tofu more like, I don't know how to explain it, more like textured and like fake chickeny, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Anyways, once I started freezing the tofu, it's really changed the game. So that's what I did with this. Although I didn't really give this enough proper time to dethaw. It's about like halfway dethawed, but I think it should work. Now, obviously there are like literally a million different ways to prepare tofu. This is just like a really simple way I like to do it. So I'm just kind of roughly chopping the tofu into, I mean, it was supposed to be cubes, but these aren't really cubes anymore. And I'm just gonna toss this all into a bowl because I'm gonna toss it with some sauces. Oh wow, this is horribly inconsistent chopping. I'm fired from chef school. I don't know why I said that, I'm not, I'm not in chef school. So I'm gonna add in some tamari, you can do a soy sauce. It's basically like the same thing, it's just like gluten-free. Is it lower sodium too? I don't know. I just feel like every vegan recipe calls for tamari, so I just buy tamari instead of soy sauce. It honestly tastes the same to me though. I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid smoke. I actually normally don't do this, but I'm feeling inspired today for a little. Oh, I just got that everywhere. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a generous sprinkle of sea salt. I also have some nutritional yeast that I'm going to, again, generously coat. Now that looks like too much, but it's just the right amount. So, I mean, this is just me. I don't really care. I'm just gonna mix this up with my hands. It'll kind of turn into this like weird coating paste thing, something like that. Okay, now for the Brussels sprouts, I'm gonna take a little bit of oil. I'm just using some olive oil, but honestly you could use, oh, that poured out way quicker than I meant it to. So normally I just put enough oil to like lightly coat. These are a bit more on the heavily coated side right now. Garlic powder on top, salt, pepper. I'm gonna take a little bit of onion powder as well. 
So now I'm gonna toss this in the oven and put it in there for about 15 minutes. And then once the 15 minutes is up, I'm gonna kind of flip everything, mix everything around. And then that's when I'm gonna add the balsamic vinegar to the Brussels sprouts. Okay, so that is going in. Hey Google, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, and that's starting now. Wow, what would I do without Google? And then for rice here, I'm gonna be super lazy. I just have some minute rice, so I'm just gonna, you know, make up a little batch of that. Okay, so these have been in for about 15 minutes. I can see things are looking good. Okay, now on the Brussels sprouts, I'm gonna just do a nice drizzle. And a lot of this will kind of thicken up and evaporate, so you can put way more than you think you actually need, because it does thicken. And that's gonna go right back in the oven for another 10-ish, 10, 10, 15. Okay, there we go. How delicious does that look? See, I like my Brussels sprouts a little charred. I'm not mad about that. Now I'm just gonna assemble that onto my plate. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of tahini and drizzle that over top. You could definitely like water this down with a bit of water just so it like spreads a bit better. But I'm just like hungry, so no time for that. I also made some homemade pickled red onions. I'm gonna add those over top just to add like a bit of sourness to this dish. And then finally, I just have some sesame seeds here. I'm just gonna put those on top just for a little bit of crunch. So there we go, that is my super easy dinner. I'm gonna have leftovers, tons of leftovers for tomorrow. And that took under 30 minutes. It really was honestly only like five minutes of work and then I just like threw it into the oven. So a very low effort, last minute meal. But how good does that look? Wow, what a crazy, crazy day this was. Good day though. These Brussels sprouts are so, so good. Also, can we please take in how big this chunk of onion is? I cut majority of the pickled onions into like little strips, but I guess this piece I was just like, you know what, just whole onion in there. This really is so good. Let me know what I should pickle next because I've been on a pickling adventure. Um, I did red onions, obviously. I mean, I feel like just making homemade kimchi is gonna be too big of a challenge. So something, you know, beginner, beginner pickling level. I feel like I could do like maybe a pickled carrot, or maybe just like homemade pickles. Well, let me know and give me a link to a recipe because I need help. Okay, I am nice and full. My kitchen's all clean. I'm just about ready to go to bed, but I did want to chat to you guys a little bit more about our sponsor, Squarespace. So I've been using Squarespace for over a year now, and what I really love is that it is really designed for any purpose. So every template design supports all major content types, whether it's pages, galleries, blogs, commerce, AKA merch, which you didn't hear it from me, but I may or may not be diving into very, very soon. And it really is as easy to use as it gets. I know before deciding to make a website on Squarespace, I was intimidated for a long time because I have no background in coding or building a website or graphic design or any of that stuff. But with Squarespace, you really don't have to worry. They have templates, they do domains, and the interface is really intuitive and user-friendly. So I promise if I can go on there and create new pages and make updates and make edits and things like that, then I'm sure you can too. So head on over to squarespace.com slash Jacqueline Forbes to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. That is it for me. I'm gonna go head to bed. Leave a comment down below of which videos you guys wanna see next, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.